1925, and that was changed from three to two, and suddenly the goal scoring rate went back up again. But what happened? The fans were delighted with the number of goals went in, but managers and coaches said, oh, to hell with all this, by the way, and they made the attacking centre half of that day a stopper centre half. And this Jimmy McGrory had to deal <coughs> with all during his career that there were men literally in the centre half position out to stop him scoring goals. And it is a tribute to him that they obviously didn't manage to do it. In fact, it's ironic that the stopper centre half for our rivals across the city at Ibrox was Jimmy Simpson, who was the father of our own Ronnie Simpson, the goalkeeper in the 67 campaign. After Jimmy left uh, Celtic Park, he went to Kilmarnock. And then war intervened, of course, and he came back to Celtic Park as Celtic's third manager after Willie Maley and Jimmy McStay in 1945. A bad time at Celtic Park. The ground and everything had been allowed to deteriorate uh, during the war years. There was not much money about. And he found it quite difficult uh, to get a team together that was doing well. But as the 50s developed, that remarkable era in Scottish football, because it, 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 it's almost unbelievable when you consider what we're going through just now. But in the 1950s, 11 different Scottish teams won a major trophy. Almost an unbelievable statistic when you consider that everything nowadays is narrowed down into Lissy to two teams. So in the 1950s, Jimmy also won his trophies. The 1951 Scottish Cup, he also won the Simungo Cup that year as well, beating the best of Scotland. 1953, they won the Coronation Cup, beating the best of Britain, including Arsenal and Manchester United, on the way to the final against Hibs. They did the double in 53-54. In 1956, they won the League Cup for the first time, beating Partick Thistle in the final after a replay. And then, of course, in 1957, a year later, they repeated that feat in that never-to-be-forgotten day at the National Stadium, when it truly was Hamden in the sun, as Rangers were thrashed 7-1 on that so he had a lot of success, and he's very much a man that we should regard uh, for his achievements. It is great on a day like this to be able to welcome his immediate family, his children, James, Elizabeth and Maria, and their extended family. And on behalf of Celtic supporters, not over here, <laughs> but throughout the world, I would like first of all to congratulate you on having such a distinguished father and as an ancestor, and also thank you for giving Celtic such a wonderful service. Thank you, John. Tony, Tony Hamilton, to say a few words on behalf of Celtic Football Club. Thanks, John. Thank you. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Father Sweeney, I'd like to add my welcome on, on behalf of Celtic <coughs> to all of you here today. And I think that uh, there's a few of us within Celtic for the past two and a half years or so that have been extolling the virtues at every opportunity of, of Celtic Grave Society. I think they've surpassed ourselves in, on, on two fronts today. Uh, firstly and most importantly, they've reunited the McGlory family with the football club and I think we're all very grateful for that. Uh, and I think that they've also brought a, a crowd that we've never seen before uh, at a Celtic Graves event and we've had probably 15 or so of these in the, the past two and a half years, so so well done to everybody who, who made the effort here today. There's a few of us that uh, were lucky enough to document the history of Celtic Football Club in a film between 2005 and 2008, and we had limited resources in terms of footage of, of Mr McGrory, but we did speak to a lot of people who are here today, a lot of people who, who worked with Mr McGrory and, and who worked for him. And I think the underlying message was that, 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 that he was peerless as a football player, he was peerless. And we've heard, we've heard Jim Craig document some of the statistics. And this is an important time for the football club in its 125th year. And I think the overriding feeling amongst the Celtic support is that if we're lucky enough to live for another 125 years, then Mr McGrory will remain peerless. Uh, 